of the pantheon of news I have here in front of me. Here's one that particularly sickened me. Yeah, he was a socialist, but he meant well. You go back 80 years ago when his thought processes had already matured. Talking about Ernest Hemingway. The choice you had was fascism and black uniforms and Kurtzel helmets and Benito Mussolini, or it was socialism. The banksters financing both sides, we now know in hindsight, put out that offer. And many well-meaning people went and became socialist and communist because they believed that was the system that was countering this. Later, they learned about Stalin and the rest of it, and many of them turned against it, like George Arwell, real name Eric Blair. But I have been touched by the novels of Ernest Hemingway. I, I read some of them when I was young and hadn't had enough life experiences to then read them and to know that he was putting a lot of real things that happened to him and things that he saw and things that he reported on during the Spanish Civil War um, as a reporter, like for whom the bell tolls. And it was known at the time, decades later, after World War II, that Hemingway was internationally respected. He was calling for peace. And the FBI began harassing him and harassing his family and persecuting him. And when he said they were harassing him and tapping his phone, they came and arrested him and took him and gave him shock therapy until he was almost a vegetable. And he was so depressed that his intellect and his deep mind that gave him access to his soul had been burned away, he committed suicide. And they called him at the time a conspiracy theorist. A conspiracy. They took the conspiracy theorist and they strapped him down and ran blue lightning across his cerebral frontal lobe, left and right hemispheres. They ran electricity hundreds of times through his brain in, in the hatred of his humanity and his heart and his soul. They turned him into a zombie and then kicked him out on the street. And it didn't matter that his family and others said, yes, we're being harassed. They said, you're a conspiracy theorist. And they arrested him and they murdered his mind. And now it's all been declassified. The harassment, the surveillance. Oh, the conspiracy theorist. Ernest Hemingway, murdered by the New World Order. That's why the globalists are going to kill me. I'm not even worried about it. I, I, wanna, I love life so much, I'm willing to give up my life. I'm not worried about that, but I do not want them to grab me and, and lobotomize me with, with, with uh, electricity or with a knife or drug me up for years in solitary confinement and roll me out drooling. But if they do that, it's okay, folks. That's because they're weak, they're fallen, they're scum, they're trash. But here it is, Ernest Hemingway driven to suicide over FBI surveillance. Ernest Hemingway may have been driven to kill himself because of his uh, surveillance by the FBI, his close friend and collaborator has said. And if you go through it, the Nobel Prize winner, again, it turns out, was under FBI surveillance. Yeah, reading about Ernest Hemingway and the FBI harassment in his bank accounts, bugging his house, his car, other harassment. They then had him uh, committed with electroshock. And, of course, now they've released uh, FBI documents. They released some in... 1983, but it's still a conspiracy theory, and now they've released uh, more. G. Uh, and, of course, uh, J. Edgar Hoover had a personal interest in the case. He loved to stalk people uh, and harass folks, especially famous people, because he was an egomaniac with no talent of his own. I mean, that's, that's who peoples the psychopathic government uh, and, and, and mega-corporate uh, crony uh, power structures. Later that month, he was committed for psychiatric care for believing the FBI was harassing him at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, where he received electroshock treatment. He had been suicide several times before being released. A few days after returning home to catch him, he shot himself in the head with his favorite shotgun at age 61. In the years since, I've tried to reconcile Ernest's fear of the FBI, which I regretfully misjudged with the reality of the FBI file, wrote his friend, the author of Papa Hemingway. I now believe he truly 
since the surveillance and that it was subsequently contributed to his anguish and his suicide. Uh, no, he never tried to commit suicide till they grabbed him for saying he was under surveillance, which is now admitted, his mail being gone through, bank accounts, harassment, you name it, uh, phone calls, people in his yard, all of that. And so then they took him and electroshock therapied him for month after month after month after month after month after month after month. And still, even though this is all admitted, they talk about him like he's a kook. Even when they murder you, it's your fault. Because if you faced the tyranny, if you faced what a sick joke it is to have Obama, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, running all these new wars and calling, him, calling it peace and telling you it's not war, if you admit you're being lied to brazenly and that they think you're so stupid, they think you're so stupid that, that, that you don't know what a war is, or they call the Patriot Act patriotic when it guts the entire Bill of Rights, completely guts six of the Ten Amendments, partially guts the other four, the first ten. It's all a sick joke to these people to have all these talking heads on the Sunday shows in one unified attack on the Constitution and how it's outdated and a piece of garbage. And the... the, the over-the-top attack on liberty and freedom going on at all of the public schools in this country, at the colleges, at the high schools, demonization of America, demonization of the founders, demonization of the Bill of Rights and Constitution. When it was the greatest expression of human liberty at that point, and it is set up against tyranny to allow tyrants to get the mob all hyped up, the general public to bring in tyranny, and to stop dictators from coming to power. And they've worked around it, they've built giant bureaucracies, they've done their best to erode it. And now they point at it and say, it's the reason we've got problems. Just like they blame free market for the banking collapses, when it's the banks doing this by design, threatening to fully collapse the world economy at a faster pace if we don't give in to their larceny, if we don't give, give in to their hostage taking of the economy. And then Greece, second bailout, hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars, your tax money, Germans, British tax money, French tax money. And we're told, oh, it's for those Greeks, and it's all to the private central banks that created the fraudulent instruments and put their people in as the finance minister and the prime minister two and a half years ago and publicly had meetings about how they were going to bring the country down. Open, naked, criminal activity against society on the surface, and they're not going to stop until we stop them. I know the average person working at the FBI, the average police officer, the average uh, government bureaucrat, the average corporate minion. You're not bad people. You're compartmentalized. You're given fake, false projections politically for why you do what you do. But if you pull back and gauge what's happening in the context of history, there's no doubt this thing stinks to high heaven. I know the last few days I smelled something rotten. Something stinking. I knew there was dead meat somewhere in my backyard. I went into the woods, there was a dead raccoon. Rotten. Well, you can smell the stench of tyranny, even if you try to live in denial. How are you ignoring it? As we accept globalism, as we get further away from the Constitution and Bill of Rights, the money, the liberty, the private property, the prosperity, the dignity, the honor, the pride, it's all drying up like puddles in the Sahara Desert. We'll be right back with Key News. Stay with us.